Hey, what's up everyone? This is Saurabh and these are some of my thoughts on the Air India Boeing 787-8 that went down, could not produce any thrust, lost capability to climb, stall and nose up and it began to glide slowly, fall slowly and crashed. This is an initial conversation that I wanted to have with as many people as I can with this video. This is my observation of the plane. An aircraft's maintenance and inspection records, especially for a large-body modern airliner like the Boeing 787, include pre-flight checks, transit checks, and daily checks. And further on, we have A check, B check, C check, D check, and mid-period visit check. And I'm not going into the details uh, of these in this video. We'll save that for some other time, okay? So, uh, I'm, I'm sure you guys must have already seen by now, you guys might be knowing at this point, a lot many people have stepped up, many people have come up with their theories, um, you know, what according to them uh, might have happened on the 787 and I'm here to eliminate a lot of those theories beginning with the bird strike. <laughs> I've, I want you guys to realize this, okay? Its engines are powered by uh, the Rolls-Royce Trent 1000 or General Electric GNX turbofan engines. And we're taking General Electric GNX engines here, which powers most of the 787's uh, longer routes with a takeoff thrust of about 69,800 pounds with a fan diameter of about 111.1 .1 inches and air mass flow at takeoff of about 2,559 pounds per second. What I'm trying to make you realize is that a bird strike is going to do absolutely nothing to those General Electric engines on a Boeing 787. That is just so stupid and <laughs> I'm, I'm just um, I have personally heard this from many of my friends that are pilots out there. It's, it's disappointing, guys. A bird strike, a flock of birds will do absolutely nothing to the engines of a Boeing 787. It's, it's disappointing, guys. A bird strike will... So now, let's talk about flaps. Flaps are extended before V1. After the pilots hit V1, they have to take off. They cannot abort the takeoff. So the flaps have to be extended here so that the plane can have that increased lift for a climb off the concrete of the runway and can lift off the runway and gain its initial climb. So the flaps after you have lifted the massive plane off the runway have to be then retracted as, as that reduces drag and with that now the aircraft can have efficiently its initial climb. On Boeing aircrafts there's been many occasions in the past where the flaps get stuck in their position and for the pilots to deploy them properly. If I go on and convince myself not to claim the captain or the first officer of making any wrong decision inside the captain, maneuvering a wrong move or decision-making blunder at that very moment, based on, you know, just their flying experience, as some people have to comment uh, on this, uh, this tragedy, I can still say that the flaps, when they're not, when they're stuck in their position, can enable a stall which is very surprising to me that nobody's pointing this out nobody's talking about this but it looks very clear to me looking at this footage from behind that this was a stall the aircraft reached a point of stall at this point right here and the aircraft has a slow glide as both the engines are not producing any thrust and it, it just crashes immediately as um, it turns into this massive fireball that we look in the footage right here. Also, where I'm standing in this, the flaps could be deployed prematurely. Way too early by the pilots. Yep, that's a thing too. If you retract flaps too early at a relatively lower airspeed and that low altitude, now that can lead to a loss of lift that we were just talking about. 
and completely take you away from that climb we acquire after the plane lifts progressing to an initial climb progressing to an initial climb and instead start a stall and potential loss of any sort of control takes me to Captain Subawal also saying something like I'm losing power no thrust um, in those final moments as the 787 might be just hanging above the medical college and it was all over for them in the next two to three seconds. That loss of lift, you have to realize, um, it will increase substantially the stall speed here on this 787. It is vulnerable to stalling and it will not regain altitude and speed and it will crash. And yes, an early flap retraction is pilot error. Sometimes they misinterpret instrument readings or make mistakes in their checklists. Because yes, modern airliners like the 787s are equipped with these systems to alert the pilots inside the, the cockpit on issues over flaps or have checklists in place to address them. But hey, pilots make mistakes. They have made mistakes. Let's not take ourselves away from that. This is not being inhuman. Absolutely, we miss Captain Subawal, just like we miss every captain and every first officer that we lost in an air disaster. And they made mistakes. Pilots have made mistakes and they have lost their lives because of it. You will not take this away from commercial aviation any day. This is commercial aviation. We're all humans. It absolutely baffles me that I have to explain myself over this. You really mean to tell me that pilots cannot commit any of these mistakes just solely because of their longer hours of flying experience? Are, are you right in your head, sir? Are you kidding me right now? Also, the 787 has an ETOPS 330. Um, you can remember that if you want to. Uh, this is not a single engine failure, so we'll not go there which further supports that the uh, pilots on Air India 171 had both the engines uh, failed right in front of them because with one single engine failure and an ETOPS 330 they would have made a turnaround and land back at Ahmedabad airport. It was a cakewalk for them. Also some other factors that could lead to a double engine failure uh, could be uh, fuel contamination. Yes, that can absolutely happen. I'll explain. You see, jet fuel contains both dissolved and undissolved water. High humidity like it was in Ahmedabad can exacerbate the problem by increasing the amount of water vapor in the air, some of which can then condense and contaminate the fuel. Also, the second thing would be icing. While summers might not constitute to icing on planes, it is still possible for ice to form in fuel lines. If there's water present in the fuel and the temperature drops sufficiently for the water to accumulate anywhere inside the fuel system. I also can see that the ram air turbine is deployed here in this footage. I don't know how many of you guys have seen it or have paid attention to it in the footage. I I'm sure none of you have. Also, uh, what could be seen in the footage is that the landing gear is not retracted. Uh, now, that is very suspicious to me and I cannot comment uh, anything on that for now. Also, to stomp uh, the chances or possibility of a bird strike on this Dreamliner, I'll also mention this, that when a flock of birds pelt an engine, or both engines, if we're anywhere comparing this to an A320 on a Hudson River, you will always see sparks, smoke, or fire being sucked out the engines of the airplane. And in this footage, lad, we cannot see that. Except for the bird strike, what I'll go with is maybe um, a debris could absolutely get pulled in some way or just got ingested into the engines and caused, can cause engine damage. Also, uh, there was this information out that a loud bang was heard at the point of V1. I'm not sure if this information is true or not, so I'll take that with a grain of salt. For uh, the footage is absolute mud hole. It is not good quality. 
And for a guy who shoves his head into the technical aspects of these planes, I'll at least take you away from these theories that do not make sense at all. We take on planes a lot more deeper here on this channel. The aircraft's two flight recorders have been recovered and a digital video recorder. The second black box was also located uh, the aircraft's flight data recorder. The NTSB had sent a go-to team to assist and the FAA said it stands ready to launch a team immediately. We'll let the whole investigation roll out from here and carry it out from here. And yes, that will provide the families with so much closure and clarity on this 787 disaster. Yes, this was a raw video on purpose. I wanted to get my thoughts out on this um, Boeing 787 uh, crash immediately. And maybe a storytelling way sometime in the future. We'll save that for now. Let us all for now think of the crew, the passengers who were on board and the families that have been affected. I'll see you guys with Singapore Flight 6. Thank you and bye.